Sheila Kuehl, and this is Get Used To It, a monthly issues discussion show on things of interest to the lesbian gay community and all the rest of you, I hope. Well, this is our holiday show. What do you do with a holiday show? You do families. So we have two families to bring to you today that I want you to meet and hear from. Um, the first is right here with me. Isn't that a good thing? Because otherwise we'd have empty chairs. Uh, Chris Caldwell, Rich Llewellyn, and Jan Llewellyn. And uh, two other additions, I think. Tell us uh, who's in your family. Who are you? That's Ro this is Rosie. And Hi, are Rosie. You? Are you? Oh, we're not going to speak. And this is <laughs> Rosie's twin brother, Robbie. Robbie and Rosie. And uh, I guess we're, in a sense, I think today what I want to talk about is sort of how, how it is we sometimes have to make up our families because often they don't... Uh, See, it's just doing it sort of the regular way. I <laughs> see Rosie's interested in what you're wearing there, Chris, huh? Rosie helped pick out my tie today. She did, yeah. huh? So um, tell me how you have organized yourself sort of as a family. Well, um, I guess I'll start. Um, we, Chris and I have been together now for 13 years, and uh -huh. Robbie and Rosie have been part of our lives for the last three. Uh-huh. Um, our immediate family really consists of the four of us, my sister Jan, who lives here in Los Angeles, and about three of their uh, gay uncles who are, like my sister, their godparents, and who are permanently part of their lives. So they have a lot of sort of parents in a way, right? But do they see you as their two primary parents? We're definitely their primary. Primary parents, primary caregivers, but uh, as you said, there are a lot of people who are in the inner circle. But we're yep. the two who are there at 3 a.m. What do they call you at 3 a.m. or any other time? What do you call me? What's my name? Puppy. Puppy. What's yeah. my name? What's his name? Daddy. Daddy. Give me five. <laughs> Daddy and Poppy. And who are you, Jan, to this group? Um, I'm Aunt Jan or AJ. AJ. Right, Rose? And then they've got lots of uncles. Uh-huh. So, well, it seems to me to be the great American family, the... Uh, the uh, regular old gay and lesbian family. How do you, um, would you say this has made a difference in your lives, having Where's these children with you? Uh oh, is there supposed to be a little tie in there, Rose? This is a problem. Don't tear Poppy's tie up on national TV, dear. <laughs> Sheila said millions of people see this show. Um, yes, um, one difference it's made is just having children, which any person who has their first kid will tell you is a dramatic difference. Uh, wonderful, but dramatic. Um, late nights, early mornings, and all-consuming. Um, in addition, and sort of as a compliment to that, to some extent we've become sort of parents more than anything else, um, like many people with young kids do. Our sort of social life becomes organized around kids. Our schedule is organized around kids, around naps, around non-naps, around did they eat, did they not eat. And some of the things we used to do before we had kids, we don't do as much, but we've been very lucky that my sister certainly um, and our sort of our close extended circle of friends have found this to be a blessing and an addition for them instead of subtraction. You know, we'd heard stories about from straight and gay people that when you have your first child, that there's a group of people who just aren't child people and they, that sort of and they disappear fade away. Theoretically, huh? we've had some of that, um, but we've been very lucky that our close friends, in fact, have become closer. I think, if anything. Jan, how, are you, um, do you spend a lot of time with the kids? Um, yes, a lot of time. I live nearby. I moved to L.A. from North Carolina about two years ago, and I bought a place near where they live, and I'm their best babysitter. <laughs> and, and their best friend. And um, we see each other a lot, but luckily the early mornings and late nights are not mine. So I get the good, You get to go not, home. Right. I yes, get I'm the, an auntie, too. I understand that I get exactly. the good, but not really the bad. Wonderful. She gets to spoil them. Right. She's, uh, Jan's the one who introduced him to McDonald's. Uh-huh. 
I, and that's spoiling them, huh? Right. Well, well, I'll tell you what. How about if we let the kids go out and play, which I know they want to, <laughs> and we'll take a break, 16 seconds only, though, so if you want to know how this all started, why don't you come right back? I hostiled through Europe this summer, and now I literally have an address book full of friends from around the world. Hosteling International. You have to see the world to understand it. Hi, welcome back to Get Used to It. Today, as I'm sure you saw, we're talking about families and talking with families in our lesbian and gay community. Um, how do we do it? What do we have to go through to do it? How is it? Should we be doing this? And I guess, how do people feel about their lives? Um, those are my questions to you. Uh, and clearly there must be some kind of chronology that you all went through. I mean, um, the two of you, Chris and Rich, and you, Jan, I assume when, as Rich's sister, having to, as, as perfectly wonderful as you are about all this, <laughs> there must be a moment. So if, if you wouldn't mind, I would like to step back for a second. Um, when you first got together and, and perhaps decided that, well, this was going to be a relationship that was going to last, were you thinking at that time about including children in your relationship? I'd say we thought about it from the very beginning. When we, I mean, partly because it was something that I thought about in my life. Uh, even before I was in a relationship with Rich, it was something that was important to me. And you know, this may sound even more hokey, but kind of from the beginning of my relationship with Rich, I knew it was the right relationship uh -huh. uh, some 13 years ago. And so it was something we kind of talked about and thought about from the beginning, but we weren't at a point in our lives in kind of terms of our own stability, partly the relationship and just partly you know, economically and jobs and everything else to really start thinking about it. Until, and then we started thinking about it seriously. Uh, probably, I don't know, six, seven, eight years into the relationship. And I think that's true, but it's slightly overstated. I mean, we talked about it in the beginning. And I think Chris, Chris came out late. And as a result, Chris, I think, had seen himself as a heterosexual person with children. Mm -hmm. and, and as a result, when he came out, all of a sudden, the rest of his sort of life pattern was the same, which I think is a wonderful sort of way to come out, just to move over and be gay and sort of still have the same plan. I came out earlier, I had sort of more coming out sort of years, and I think I, like a lot of gay people, had sort of decided that I probably wasn't going to have kids. And you start kind of putting a box around that as a possibility. And when we got together, Chris was always going to have them. You know, he didn't know who he was going to have them with, but I was the one and I was going to be the one. And, and it took me some sort of, I think, even though we sort of talked about it, it took me some time to climb out of that box of, this isn't going to be part of my life's pattern. Why do you think we're in that box? Well, you know, I think it's society. I think what happens is when we're, for many of us, if you're dealing with this when you're adolescent, you're feeling confused and alone anyway, and you start thinking of yourself as different, and some of the things that don't look up available to you very easily, like children, you start trying to convince yourself you don't want. Oh, I, that's not me. You know, I, I think they're great, but they're not me. And even though you're not sort of openly dealing with the issue that you're gay, you know you're different, and somehow kids aren't part of it. You know, I think I'm going to go to Hollywood. I think I'm going to go to the big city. I'm going to be a big city type. Kids aren't going to be me. And by the time you're sort of really dealing with the issues of sexual orientation and sexuality and, and how you build your boxes, you've always said, eh, that's not me. It's, it wasn't a conscious decision that I couldn't do it. I think feeling that you probably couldn't do it convinces you to convince yourself out of self-preservation that you don't well, want to. Well, I think in the, in the early days, I mean, it, it seems to me that the, sort of the gay male couple is thought of as the quintessential double income, no kids couple, uh, you know, by the m marketing research people, by everybody. It's just taken mm -hmm. for granted, especially two guys aren't going to think about having kids. Maybe two women are. But early on in the lesbian community, it was a matter almost of rejection. We were not going to have the heterosexual lifestyle. And for a long time, that meant we were not going to do kids. That was the fantasy because a couple of years ago, when a couple of lesbian mothers wanted to put together a conference and invited women who had children, who wanted to have children, thought maybe 60 women would show up, 350 women showed up. So this fantasy that we don't have children Many of us having been in marriages, etc., sort of came out of the closet as well, that we really do. But didn't it change something for you, Chris? I mean, now you're a, a gay man in a relationship with a gay man. You still want to have children. Didn't that 
it sort of seemed like a barrier to you in a way? It did, and you know, part of what Rich said that, that I guess I'd comment on is it, this was not, certainly by the time we really started talking about doing it seriously in our relationship, you know, I, I don't think this was just a kind of heterosexual assimilationist or copycat urge at that point, and it's not as if, I, I don't think I was just applying the, the social mores that in order to have the perfect household and the perfect family, kids are part of that. What I heard Rich saying, though, was that it was something that you had taken for granted more in your life for a longer time than he had. I, I, and part I, of that's just because I like kids. Yeah. And, and actually, I mean, Rich, we both like kids, and, you know, and we, we were close to the kids in our life through kind of primarily through my side of the family, nieces and nephews and the like. And it was something that I always thought I wanted to do because I thought I'd enjoy it and I'd get a lot out of it, all of which has proven to be true even more so than... But didn't you have that moment thinking, okay, now I don't know if I can do this? Oh, I had moments when... I had moments when I thought that we were crazy to want to do it. Uh, and then slightly different from that is the moment of thinking whether I'm crazy or not, is it possible? Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's sort of the next thing. And I guess one of the things that people do when they're thinking of having kids is they, you know, they talk to their families about it. It's certainly taken for granted. And I think it's, it's really a wonderful thing. I, you know, we, we tend to praise our straight families a lot, Jan, as I'm sure that's you know, good. it's sort of like, like oh, she likes me, she still good. will talk to me, you know, it's really important, and, and so you get a lot of credit for very little effort, have you noticed? Not that you're making very little effort, I saw it with the kids, but did, how did you decide to talk to your families about this, and what kind of response did you get? And then I want to, Jan, you get ready, I'm going to ask you for your version of this. Um, I actually didn't talk to my family about it until we were pretty far down the process. Because? I, I guess partly because I thought there was no point in talking to him about it if it wasn't really going to happen. Right. Uh, and in fact, I think by the time that we really talked about it the first time, when I talked to my parents about it, uh, we were very close to adopting a child. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was not, it was not, not these the kids. Right. Uh, it, was a, it was another adoption that did, did not work out in the end. And my parents, at that point, we were so far along that I think even if they did have reservations, they knew well enough not to express them. <laughs> uh, Oops, too late. <laughs> but to their credit, I mean, they didn't express the reservations then. My guess is they had to have some, but they've been terrific, you know, since then and all along. And I expect, siblings? I thought that they would be as well. You have siblings too? I have five older brothers. Wow. So... Uh, and I'm very close to some of them, and you know, all the family's been good. There hasn't been any rejection. I'm closer to some than others. Actually, I have one brother who's four years older than I am, who I've grown much closer to because of the kids, because he has a kid who's a very similar age, and so oh. we vacation together and things that we didn't spend as much time together oh. before. How about you, Rich? Um, <clears throat> I think we probably talked about it I have one sister and one brother. Um, I'm very close to my sister, and we're both close to my brother. Not as close to each other, but we're both close to him, too. And I think we probably talked about it in the abstract with relatives of our generation. I don't think I talked about it just like Chris, and I don't think it was only because it may not happen to my parents. Um, my mother was dead by that point, but my father I was, I was remarried, had a stepmother. And part of it, I, I do think, is that what I think we often do when we're sort of dealing with our family is sort of on a need-to-know basis, even if we don't admit that. <laughs> and it, is, it was true that it was one of those things that was sort of a philosophical discussion until all of a sudden it became like it might happen. And what happened with us, I think, which is what happens, I think, with a lot of adoptive parents, and just certainly biological parents, too, you, you're sort of thinking about it, and all of a sudden there's a real possibility. Somebody gets pregnant, and they didn't really think it was now, but all of a sudden they're pregnant, and all of a sudden what became a a maybe is a real thing. We were sort of thinking about it. I called an adoption lawyer, and purely by the luck of the draw, or the unluck as it turned out, that lawyer had a biological birth mother that didn't have a placement that he put me in contact with. The baby was due in four weeks. Um, it was totally out of the blue, not at all expected. Um, it ultimately fell through. Mm -hmm. um, but, and so all of a sudden we're down this road. My father, who was never much for talking about these issues. Um, <laughs> didn't talk about this one either. These gay issues or these grandchild issues? Gay issues or grandchildren for that matter. Mm -hmm. But um, my stepmother, and I was surprised at this, she said, I've been, I was talking on the phone with her and she said, you know, I understand what you do and I'm very supportive, but this kid thing, I don't know. 
this is going to take me some getting used to. And Southern woman, you know, Protestant tradition from the South, and 67. Um, she was probably 65 at the time. Mm -hmm. And I have to say that what happened is we ended up, not this time, it fell through, but that gave her more time to think. It was probably a year later when this adoption was finally accomplished. And she was still, I think, a little reluctant. Um, but when they met Robert and Rosie, you know, especially twins, you know, little <laughs> tiny, so they were tiny, they were cute. And it's hard not to fall for babies. Right. Um, and I think that did seal it. Um, and my sister was there from the beginning. What is from the beginning? I mean, who can remember? <laughs> really? <laughs> We've got no family memory. Um, we talked ages before they adopted when um, John Irving's book, Hotel New Hampshire, the siblings talk about having a baby for each other. And I was, um, I'm not anymore, but I was married and called Rich and said, hey, maybe we should have a baby for you guys. Because my ex-husband and I absolutely didn't want kids for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Luckily, we, <laughs> Rich said, you've lost your mind. <laughs> um, and we didn't do that. But, um, I, you know, they are great parents. And I knew that they would be. And, uh, you know, better them than me. I wasn't. I'm a great aunt, but I wouldn't be such a great parent. So, did you worry at all, friend to friend, honestly speaking, did you worry at all about how the kids would do sort of in the world? I mean, one of the responses that I get from sort of straight family members, mine and others, is, gee, honey, it's okay with me, but are you sure you want to do that because it's so difficult being gay or being lesbian? And then it's sort of exacerbated by, do you want to do that to the kids is sometimes what we hear. Um, well, I'm pretty naive, so I didn't actually think about that too much. And, and I think now, um, with their extended family, that um, the amount of love these kids have is absolutely overwhelming. I think adolescence probably will be hard, but I think it's hard for everyone. So I think the pluses way, you know, there's no question that having the kids having them is the right thing and that in the long run they'll be fine. So you never felt any doubts about this, huh? Well, I was going to say, which isn't to say that we haven't worried about those issues. Sure. Tell me. Uh, I mean, you definitely worry about, you know, how are they going to be accepted in the world? I mean, they're, they're brown children to start with uh, and then they've got these two gay white male parents and, you know, we'd be kidding ourselves if we didn't think that there aren't going to be times that they, you know, people are not comfortable with that and probably much worse than just expressing dis discomfort. And actually, we sometimes struggle with the issue of do, to, the ex to what extent do we want to create a protected, sheltered environment where they don't have to deal with these issues. And, and Frank, at this point, I think we have done a pretty good job of doing that. But we also realize at some point they're going to have to deal with these issues and go out in the world. And we can't try and shelter them forever. You know, most of the, from what we understand, and we're not therapists, but most of the studies indicate that kids, as far as they know, do end up okay. Um, they have some tough times in adolescence, they've said, and there are very few actually with gay men, with kids from birth. Most gay men who have been studied at least are kids who were pre previously married, and some point later in life, while the child was an older child came out. Mm -hmm. But, you know, these things, I don't know if, you're, if you saw or some of your, your viewers saw a few weeks ago, there was an after school break special that we taped about these two lesbian mothers who were perfect. They were beautiful and they were smart and they were rich. And they had a beautiful, <laughs> smart, rich son. Must have taken son. a long time to find them. <laughs> a beautiful, smart, rich son who was the captain of the basketball team. You know, he was perfect. And it showed him going to a new high school and the troubles he was dealing with with the harassment and the mothers feeling so helpless. And watching it, I was like, oh God, you know. We worry about that. I mean, I guess what we hope is that, and we believe, or we wouldn't have done it, is on balance that compared to the other sort of stresses they're going to have in their life, this is going to be one they're going to have that some other kids aren't going to have. But we intend to stay together, so we'll have a two-parent family, and that they're going to be loved. What is, what is your role in this family, Jan, as you see it? What are, you bringing, what are you bringing to it besides well, some fabulous approval let's see, for which uh, we're all grateful? We hope they're both feminists. Um, <laughs> both I, these guys or both no, the kids? No, Robert, all four. <laughs> Robert and Rosie. Um, Rich and I growing up had an, uh, uh, an aunt, uncle, and cousin who lived very close who was kind of woven in our lives, you know, dropped by. We saw them a lot um, and are very close to their, you know, the cousin to this day. And I'm... 
I'm just, I'm that. Um, you know, I'm nearby. They're not allowed to move in L.A. because <laughs> they have to stay close to me. The kids have to stay close to me. And um, I'm just their aunt. I'm and I just have to, you know, sort of jump in. Just their aunt. My, when we, we didn't know, we adopted these kids in Peru. And we didn't, we found out this sort of through a friend of a friend kind of connection and found out there were these babies available. And then we had to go in two weeks and stay two weeks. And so I called my sister, who was working. She was an accounting at a big six accounting firm and working long hours, and said, we're going to Peru in two weeks. She goes, OK. Huh. And, and we, we went. being both of them. Huh. <laughs> my sister and I went to Peru. Um, then we had to go, after we came back, there was a waiting period. Then we had to go back and get the kids. She had no notice again, had to go to Peru again. Huh. And let's, we paid for the trip. Um, <laughs> but, and she has moved here, really. She lived back east. Uh -huh. You know, I think partially for her own reasons, but partially just to be... To be with you and the kids. To be with them. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Um, hmm. And it's a great move. It's the right thing. But she's single. If you have nice, <laughs> straight, you know... Oh, I'm sure that there are a whole lot of right. men watching the show right now, aren't you? Or brothers of gay and lesbian people. That's true. Uh -huh. That's true. And it, L.A. is a big city, so I'm right. sure it's all going to work out. Well, you know, one thing, of course, the right wing says about us is, uh, among a lot of other things, is that um, uh, uh, one of the things you almost touched on, I think, early, Chris, is that, well, we're just trying to sort of reproduce in a really sick way the natural family, uh, by which, of course, they mean dad, mom, uh, Bill, Sue, and Spot. And um, do you think of yourselves as a family? Can you, I mean, do you think we need to justify ourselves, as it were, saying, no, 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 this is a family, too? I think we're absolutely a family. Uh, you know, we're, we're a family, and by, in my mind, by pretty much any definition of the word, uh, you know, in terms of a group of people who live together, we're a group of people who are bound by love, um, and we're interdependent, and, uh, you know, I, I, I think we have all the attributes of a family, except maybe unless you define it only in terms of a mom and a dad. And you've also, it's sanctioned to some extent by the law, which is a new thing for us. We're both legal parents of these kids, uh, which is not possible everywhere, but is, is possible in California and some other states at this point. So you both then petitioned to adopt through the court, and you're each is a legal parent. Right. And most in, in, in California, most of them are one parent is a legal parent. I adopted them first. And then the other parent is added as a second parent, like a step-parent, but is a step-parent of the same sex. And there, is that sort of at the whim of the court? Or? Currently, there is no appellate case that says you can't do it or you can. And so some judges do it and some don't. Some would say, I can't do this, though, Correct. wouldn't they? Yes. In my opinion, exactly. misinterpreting the law. Most do that is my understanding. There are very few. There are a few in San Francisco and a few in Los Angeles. And in fact, the, the lawyers who do this work know who they are. They make sure you get one of those judges. If you're assigned to somebody else, they have to get it reassigned somehow. Um, what they're trying to do is try to get it to be the whole court in Los Angeles and the whole court in San Francisco, and then kind of sneak to, to those <laughs> other places, um, to the Visalias. But to date, I think even in, in big, quote unquote, liberal cities, you have to make sure you get the right judge. Do you recommend that couples who are thinking of adopting try to do it that way, rather than having one person adopt and the other person say, no, that's OK, I'll, uh, of course, I know it would be a personal hmm. preference, because it's a lifetime commitment. Once you adopt, you are a legal parent, too, but. Psychologically, I think it makes a big difference, both being legal parents. I know Rich legally was the, was the initial legal parent, and then I became the second legal parent. And that was, that was important to me. Uh, it felt good, and it, and it still feels good. Um, and also, you know, f from a pure nuts and bolts perspective, it's important for the kids in terms of uh, if we were to split up, for example, I now have all of the same, you know, financial responsibilities that a legal parent has. So it provides them protection. So you can't go through a divorce, but you certainly could go through a custody struggle. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> uh, hopefully, of course, that would never happen. Um, but actually, that was sort of one of the questions. It seems to me that not allowing us to marry 
is a form of punishment. That is to say, because it's historic, it was used against African American people, and it's a it's a way to keep people from somehow being real. You know, well, you can have everything else, but you can't be real because we won't let you marry. And now the inroads that we're making are not in terms of marriage, but in terms of forming families with children. Uh, women, of course, can just biologically reproduce, although for a long time they couldn't sort of get hold of the sperm to do it, and now single women can. You know, it was against the law, right. really, for single women even to try, try to do that. But here you are with greater sort of obstacles, having to depend on someone else, clearly, to have your children. Um, do you think this is a way that we are going to, I guess, sh show America that no matter what you do to us, to keep us or try to keep us from being families, we're going to do it anyway, kind of? Because we always have. I guess to some extent, to me, that goes back to your question a little earlier. Do you find your? Do you have to justify yourself as a family? Mm -hmm. um, even though I consider my, we consider ourselves a family. Um, we do find ourselves justifying ourselves going through life because the world doesn't. Right. And it's changing. You know, everyone says it's changing, and it is changing. And we do live in a, we do in love Los Angeles. We go to a liberal preschool, we go to a liberal church. But so I do think, but the world still is against us, and I do think that. Part of what we do say is just, you know, sort of we're here. You know, we're queer, get used to it. I mean, that is part of what we're saying. And these are our kids, and I'm sorry, I gotta go take Rosie to the potty. Um, <laughs> that is sort of. Good that thing is, they have those changing places in men's rooms now in the air. Not, not enough. Not enough. Not enough. You'd well, be there's an assumption, of course, you guys aren't gonna be changing diapers, right. don't you think? Right. Um, so, but Jan, do you get, do you also feel sometimes, or do you get, questions from other family members or your friends saying, you know, but they're not a real family. I mean, they can't be a real family. Um, most people who know me wouldn't have the nerve to <laughs> say that. Yeah. You know, the questions more, I mean, so far more are around um, their ethnicity. Mm -hmm. You know, ha when you, like you find babysitting and you go out with them, how are you related to those kids? Mm -hmm. And they're my brother's kids and that answers the question. Um, and, you know, when I'm out either with Chris, you know, the two of us take the kids to dinner. Everyone thinks, oh, I'm married to him and those are <laughs> right, our kids, which is pretty frightening for Chris. <laughs> um, and so, so I think the issues right now are more around ethnicity. Mm -hmm. um, and will be, it seems to me, as you go along, too. Cause there was a long time, particularly with babies, because that's what people really can't understand how men can have babies and right. change diapers. And, right. You know, when we were at the Kmart buying diapers and when they were infants, you know, the question in the line was not how are they related to you so much as where's their mommy? Yeah, you know? right. Where, where is the woman? Right. Yeah. Well, I wish we had more time because this has really been wonderful and it's very good of you and, of course, Rosie and Rob, I hope you'll tell them that they were they were the it of it for us. To, I have to, to say, be she here. Like, when we left with Rosie, she kept saying, "I thought I was going to be on TV. <laughs> when am I going to get on TV?" Well, maybe you could show her. I don't know. Because, uh, and and I wish I could have gone out at, from this segment at least on your line, which is, "We're here. We're a family. Get used to it." Stay tuned for the next half. We'd love to hear from you. You can write to us at Get Used to It, 8611 Santa Monica Boulevard. West Hollywood, California, 90069, and write to the attention of Terry House. Because I said so! Mom. Because I said so! Because I said so! Because I said so! Now, you've got to have an apartment... Can you imagine growing up thinking a family was something only people on TV had? So, an apartment Neither can we. Manhattan. Hi, welcome back to Get Used to It. Uh, you only had time to run out for a glass of water, but clearly I had time to go get a haircut and a change of clothes. Uh, as you might have surmised, uh, the first family that we talked to were here in our studios a week or two ago, and now we're very happy to have another family here to talk to us about uh, gay and lesbian family values. I'd like you to meet uh, Victoria Delgadillo and her partner, Yvette Falcon, and their children, Ashley Prieto and Crystal Prieto. Welcome, all four. Thank you. Thank Are you me. glad you're here? Yeah. You don't know yeah. yet, do you? Um, well, I guess uh, one of the things that people like to know, it's sort of the standard question, and I'll bet you get asked this question all the time, is the people out there are saying, well, we're not real families. You know, they call us non-traditional or whatever, but that's the nice word for it, sort of like we're not real families. Do you feel like a real family? I do, yes. 
Yeah. Yes, definitely. Pretty much. Fa. We have a uh, work and function as a regular family. We have the same duties. Get up early in the morning, run before we go to work or school. Yeah. Um, get up early, try to, you know, have breakfast ready before we leave, try to have their clothes ready so they can dress themselves and help us doing, you know, all this process to speed it up. So to be on time, we have to be at eight out of the house to leave them at school and each other to work or school respectively. We eat meals together. I mean, we plan family outings. We do family activities. I mean, just function as a usual family. How about you, Ashley? Does that feel... Yeah. What do you think about having two moms? Fun, yeah. Yeah? Is it better? Yeah. Or kind of the same as other kids? Better. You talk to other kids about it? What do they say to you? Do they ask you questions? No. No? no? Just seems like regular stuff, huh? Yeah. Well, but still, they do characterize us as, as different. I mean, one of the things I think is we... We have to plan to some extent, it seems, to either bring our families together or uh, plan for a family. How, how did it come to be that the two of you are together with these, with these two wonderful kids? Um, well, we met about two years ago, and we, we, we um, became friends, and then um, we started dating. And part of the getting to know each other, we asked a lot of questions of each other. I was interested um, to form a family. I felt as though I was ready to have a family, either by insemination of my own, you know, having some, uh, insemi becoming inseminated. Uh, but then I met Yvette, who had two great kids. I mean, so that was uh, something that drew my attention even more so. And we have a lot of the same ideas about raising children and kinds of values we'd like to give to them and just a lot of things in common. So. We started dating, and it became more and more serious, and moved in together, and um, so that's how. And here we are. And here we are. So we bet you had the children. Were you married? Yes. Right. Yes. I married within uh, a year or so. She was born, and um, that's you. That's when we find out that uh, you know, well, the family wasn't going too well because he. The father wasn't ready. That's when he told me that he wasn't ready to raise a family. As, I grew in the relationship, um, it be, I became more aware of my sense as a human and also as a woman. I was very naive about life, really. I came from Cuba when I was like a teenager and I was very naive about teenagers' life here too in general. So um, when I wanted a second child, it was real hard for me to get her because he wasn't really he wasn't, he didn't want anymore. He said one was enough and I wanted the two and we knew that the relationship wasn't working so we kind of, uh, the second child was born and we broke up soon after and I realized that I was a lesbian and as a lesbian I needed to come out and be strong about it to raise the little girls that I wanted with that sense of value and saying be happy with who you are, but I needed to first be myself and be happy with who I was. And I, the same thing that, uh, you know, that she said, I was very strong about what I want and who I want to help me raise the children. Because it, I think even any heterosexual woman will go through the same process where when she divorced the second, you know, the partner that she's going to choose, that man, if she's heterosexual, have to be, um, she has to screen it. She we have this, really but we have the it. sense that women are so wonderful with children. Was there any difficulty in our community? I mean, yes, it is. It I have, is yes, I did have a first experience um, that my first lover. Mm -hmm. It was real hard on her. She was young and mm -hmm. she didn't want kids, and she was also in the process of coming out and uh, having to deal with her own sexuality. And um, it was. I found that it was hard. She didn't want any kids. She wasn't ready for it. So we decided that. I needed to let it go. I need, we needed to let it go because I deserve, and their kids deserve it, also the chance to have a co-parent, you know, another parent sure. who's there and the same uh, level. What I mean, did you think was, that it would be hard for them? I mean, did you worry about how sort of how society or how people at school 
would think about them as you thought about it? I mean, you, you come to grips with your own sense, right, okay, I'm a lesbian, right. I'm going to have to be one. But what's the impact on Right. Then, the then you start worrying about it. I am a lesbian, I'm an adult, I can make decisions on my own, but whoever I choose as a partner, I'll be involving them too in that lifestyle if it was a woman. But I think that the most uh, important thing is like you do show love for these kids. You show them love. Victoria is a wonderful mom. I mean, she's a natural at it. She it's bathes them, feeds them. Um, take care of them, wakes up in, at night when they're sick, when they cough, when I don't hear them, she does. So she has been there for them and they had seen the love and the bonding. We come together when it comes to make rules, mm -hmm. you know, what are the rules, we agree with them. And we always, we have a bond real strong as parents. So they perceive that as a whole union and restaurant. So they feel the love. Uh -huh. And I guess every child in this world comes thinking and expecting the love of a parent. It doesn't really matter whether the parents is two men or two women or a man or a woman. Okay. It's just love. That's what they perceive of a parent, love. Uh, Ashley, do you, do you call um, mm. Yvette? What do you call Yvette? Mommy Yvette. Mommy Yvette? And how about Victoria? Victoria? Yeah. And do you sometimes, if if Mommy Vet tells you no, do you go to Mommy Victoria and ask her see if maybe she'll let you do it? Uh -uh. No. Why not? Because I know that's wrong. That's wrong because they've already agreed on the rules, right? <laughs> we went through that. We yeah, went through that. <laughs> well, we did. was it? I, I know that you you said that you had thought about having children mm -hmm. and. Do you now think that you will still have a biological child of your own? I, I see you have a bit of a handful here already. Yes. <laughs> um, I, I've always wanted to have children, even before I came out and identified myself as a lesbian. I wanted to have children even in my previous relationship. So we thought about having insemination. Then uh, the relationship ended, and then I wanted to have a child alone. And I announced that to my family, and they were very supportive. And um, but now that I have two girls, I feel like this is the ideal for me. And uh, I always jokingly say that Yvette went through the labor and the, <laughs> and and gets the stretch marks that I don't have to worry about. So I I don't want to have any. I, we want to give what we can uh, to the two of them and provide for their future and hopefully for a college ed education if they choose that. And we would like to travel as a family and you know just do things and that. And we don't have to go through diapers now anymore, and you know all that. <laughs> so start it's over real, that, yeah. Right, right. So I'm I'm very satisfied with. I mean, having I didn't even worry about it because when uh, oh. a woman feels so strong about being a mother mm. uh, or having a biological <laughs> child of her own, because I did once. I always wanted, you know, to have children. Mm -hmm. Ever since I was young, I really wanted, and that's why I believe that I didn't come out with my own, you know, find out my own identity until I had the girls, because maybe mm -hmm. as you put it yourself at the beginning, it is hard, parents, to think about it. If I wouldn't find out that I was a lesbian before I even had children, maybe today I wouldn't have any, because it's so hard to find a donor or a person that you will uh, involve your kids with, you know, or that you're thinking, okay, I, I, I want a child who will I choose as a parent, you know, as a father to be there at least for them, because I don't want to take that right away from them of knowing the father, but um, he needed yeah. to be, uh, you know, a, a good human being. Sorry. I'd like to talk more about that maybe after the break. After I want to break. see. I know the girls probably would like it. This is boring. I want to go out and play, and there's a nice place to play here, but what are your, what are the favorite games you all play together? Do you play together? Yeah. What kind of games so do we yes, play no, together? Yes. Yeah. Crystal, what do you play? Yeah. Candyland? Yeah. You play yes. games with both your moms? Mm -hmm. no. Sometimes. What kind? Sometimes. sometimes. Yeah? Sometimes. What are you going to do for um, Christmas, do you know? It's going to be a surprise. Christmas is such a fun time when it's a surprise. It is. Yeah. Well, we'll let you go out and play and talk to your moms for a couple more minutes, and we'll be right back. Bobby Griffith died at the age of 20. He didn't have a disease. He wasn't involved in gang violence or drugs. Bobby Griffith killed himself because he was gay. 
Bobby Griffith's mother is a good Christian woman. She didn't mean for her son to die so tragically, but like so many others, she allowed herself to believe the bigotry that led to her young son's death. Love and support your gay and lesbian children. That's what Mary Griffith would do if only she and Bobby could start over. Hi, welcome back to Get Used To It. Victoria and Yvette. Gee, I miss the kids already. <laughs> They're out there on the slide, and we're in here talking. But um, you mentioned uh, sort of in passing your families, uh, parents, uh, extended family. Mm -hmm. How did they react, sort of each of your families, to this bringing together, to your coming out, to your coming out, to your getting together with a you know woman with children, etc. Well, I think uh, initially for me, well, I came out about 12 years ago, so um, that wasn't a, an issue about coming out. I think as you just mentioned the the issue about joining my life with a person who had children now i i think that probably would have happened if i would have been involved with a male with children it would have still been the issue of step parenting and you know um wondering whether there was going to be that kind of bonding um but over the last several years that we've been together the my parents and family members have you know uh, acknowledged and seen that we're both uh you know, mothers to the children, and so we're included in family uh, activities, so it hasn't been an issue since then. Once do, it formed and bonded, then they just accepted it. Do they think of themselves as grandparents or, you know, uncles and aunts and whatever? Uh, the girls call my parents a grandfather and grandmother in Spanish. They uh -huh. do, yes. Uh -huh. And my parents, you know, respond accordingly, spoiling them and all the things. <laughs> oh, <you're perfect. laughs> Giving them too many right. cookies. <laughs> yeah, right. Are they here uh -huh. in town, your parents? In, in the San Gabriel Valley area. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. yeah. And how about your parents or your immediate family? Mm, I think that for my parents, it was more sort of, um, like I mentioned to you, they're, they're more like so afraid to lose the bond that they have with me and the children that when I came out of the closet, although um, they were familiar with homosexuality because in my family we do have friends that are homosexual. I grew up, you know, seeing that the family did accept homosexuality as a normal thing of life, you know, it's a, just a person who happened to love uh, another, you know, person of the same sex. But um, when I came out of the closet to them, all they said was that they didn't want to lose us, you know, or the kids, and if I was happy and I chose the right person to live my life with, that's all they did care. It's interesting so. what you said. I, I have the sense that every family in America knows somebody and has somebody in their family or their extended family. Everybody's got the cousin or the aunt or the uncle, whether it's acknowledged or not. Did you do you find the same thing? That that's true in my family. I have two nieces that are lesbians, too. Uh -huh. So it's um, something that's very much a, a part of my whole family. I mean, I think you know their partners join in family activities as well. So it's not a unusual thing. To One of the things I know that lesbian couples with children worry about sometimes has to do with the biological father. You know, will he be around? Should we tell the kids who he is? Or, I mean, I, when you were thinking about uh, donor insemination, mm -hmm. for instance, mm -hmm. I mean, these are all things I think we talk about, especially women, where we have to sort of arrange the way in which we have children mm -hmm. primarily. Was this a, a concern with the children's biological father? Is he around? Um, he, at this moment, he's not around. He was around at the beginning of our relationship. He, he's not a problem, but I, I think he knows. We never sit down and say, this is who I am, and this is my life with the kids, or, you know. I, he's always mentioning, like, gee, I feel so bad for you because you don't have anybody in your life. <laughs> Oh, I feel so bad for Victoria that she has to put up with the kids and you. And then one time I said, I said, you won't. I said, Victoria and I are very, very happy together. We had chose, you know, to be together and raise the girls together. So I don't see why you see it. So it might be a trouble for you to raise the kids or a lot of responsibility. It's not at all for us. And we, I let the girls be themselves. Uh, he mentioned a couple of times, like when the girl said, Mommy Vet or Mommy Vet, one time there was an accident that he said, um, well, you, how many moms do you have? And she said, like, well, Ashley said, well, one. And he said, well, all you have to say is Mommy, and I know who you're talking about. And she said, no, because I also call Victoria Mommy. So she herself come up to him and say, I do have two moms. I feel like that, and you have to respect the fact. And he accepted it. He never had any problem with it, and 
uh, when he calls and talks to them, he always asks about to to them about us. You know, how's your mom doing? How's Victoria? And things like that. So he really, it's not a problem at all. Did you? Was there any problem in your families or beyond, maybe in community, because of culture, religion? I mean, I. I um, I hear sometimes in the Latina community, Cubana, Chicana, whatever, mm -hmm. that uh, it's, I don't want to say because, you know, there's such traditional, the church is against this and uh, that it's more traditional, but I, I don't know. Does it seem more difficult or, because you don't seem to be saying that your family's had a, a lot of trouble with it. My mother's a devout Catholic, um, but she's always raised us to to believe that if there is a God, a God is very accepting of all people. I mean, I remember that before I even came out of the closet. That's the idea that she gave us. Um, so she is very pleased because we do say our prayers before we eat meals together as the four of us. And my mother's delighted to know that we have religion in our life. Um, so that's not an issue for, for, for our family, my family at all about religion. Yeah. And in terms of just accepting the lifestyle, or, I mean, do, do they participate in uh, your life? I mean, is it sort of like you can come to us and share our life, but we don't want to have anything to do with you? Oh, no, they do. They <laughs> definitely visit us and knock on our doors at 6 o'clock Saturday night morning, and it's like, who can that be? We need a rest. And it could be my father or my mother. And yeah. Her parents are a little bit older, so they don't drive that far. But um, they always, always coin us and, you know, asking for the girls and the family and what, when are we going to go and visit them, especially in her case. And that, my case is like, they don't even call, they just, <laughs> just drop over. Drop over and I'm like, geez, thanks, I needed the rest, but, you know, it's okay. I'm glad, I'm very glad. And when we have party in our home or um, celebration, even this, our anniversary, we celebrate as a family anniversary, including the girls, so they'll be proud of who they are being raised with you know it's not like just uh, a love relationship uh, kind of anniversary it's just a family anniversary mm -hmm. because it is a family created by love so we want to include them and they ask questions they it's say it's a party for them it's a party it's a cake <laughs> and it's presents <laughs> or they don't and, care. right and then they want to invite everybody and it's like sure it's an course. honor of of us moving in together right. we have that um when as we moved into as our as our family a, anniversary date, and then we invite friends, and we did. We're going to probably expand it because more and more people are interested in in joining and you know celebrating with us. So. And you have a, a social life with other lesbian parents, and um, does your you know do your mothers uh, ever sort of join with you? I mean, do, have they joined into your life, or does it feel very separate? Oh right, yes. No, no, no. It doesn't. It actually. Um, my mother is the type of person that she, you know, she is very, she's still very young, so she has a, she doesn't have much of a social life, but she does like to enjoy her life with, with the kids. Uh, she's not together with my father right now, so it's like the more she can be with us, the better for her. And she enjoys it very much. One time I even asked her, I said, look, we, we can invite you to go out with us, but I, it's going to be a gross bar, you know, it's going to be a, and she said, oh, I don't care. It's okay. I don't, I have no problem at all. In fact, she loved it. After that, she was always saying like, let's go. When are we going out? And I go like, mother, it's not like everyday thing, you know, we need to it's plan a lot of fun. It. So she does. She, 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 she the, I asked her, why do you like it so much? Because it seems like I don't want you to, to do it for me to please me or, you know, you, you do want to make sure that they don't do it to prove their love for you. Sure, and I and said, I don't really hate right, every I said, I know that you right. do like, that you love me and you like me and you accept my life. I just want to, I don't want you to feel uncomfortable for me. She said, oh no, I love to, it's very safe. She said, I never felt so safe in my life. She said, actually, I could get up and go and talk to anybody and join them for a dance and ask them to dance. And she was, I mean, all my friends loved her. They always ask me, they ask us, when are <laughs> you going to bring your mom? Mother. I go like, oh, Jesus. Yeah. Well, you know, it seems to me, though, that society at large, or maybe the right wing and that aspect of society, is very anxious to keep us from having families. They won't sanction it with marriage. They make adoption difficult if not impossible um, it is a it's a an imposed barrier and um, I think the reason of course is that they'll use the law to keep us you know from having families because our families are, turn out so well in, in right. essence and I guess they don't want us to have that example do you think that the children are growing up in any way differently because they're with you I mean in the positive sense well, I 
think so. I think that there, I get feedback from a lot of my heterosexual couple friends who are very open-minded and say, I wish more heterosexual couples were raising the girls to be independent, um, to have, you know, good self-esteem and to respect other people and to be open-minded and be accepting of differences of all kinds and that they will be faced in, in their life. We wish that other people would think this way. And so hopefully we are giving them, you know, the opportunity to experience things that maybe we didn't, um, given, you know, the heterosexual expectations. We're letting them mm. not wear pink because they're girls mm. and we talk about, you know, sex roles and that not, that doesn't have to be and that we want them to, you know, be uh, happy with themselves and, you know, respect themselves and assert themselves. and. So I'm hoping that with all those variables that they'll, you know, be very happy, harmonious adults. That's what we're hoping for. That's, that's what that's what our goal is. So why do you think, I mean, if you if you ever think about it, and probably as they get older, you may have to explain to them, you know, why does society hate these mommies so much? What do you think you might tell them? I mean, I know you're not personally experiencing at work or at school, right. but you know there is homophobia. Mm -hmm. Right, we do. How you know, do you think you might? We're very aware of the fact, but like I said, we feel lucky that we haven't experienced any homophobia at work or at school. Uh, um, I think that all we have to hope is that they, like I said, that they, the love that they have received at home and being raised by having the option to be who they want to be, just encourage them to be healthy and loving human beings, um, will hopefully they'll teach something to other humans you know other kids that might say oh you have to mom that's wrong and she would say you know what is wrong about it you know they love me and i love them and um they w i think that society will have very strong kids those kids are uh, being raised in homosexual household because like she mentioned we do try to make them assertive and all the obstacles that they have to go through not only as kids being raised and listening to the news and uh, listening like this is for boys and this is for girls and we break in that sort of a role and say no 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 if you want to play with it you know the uh, fire truck it's fine it's just a toy is for you to enjoy so having that to assert themselves and say hmm, this is fine I can play with what I want I can be who I want they're going to be very strong uh, young adults and they're going to fight with society because they're going to grew up loving their parents and say, you're the one at wrong. You're not accepting. So the one kind of being. tool is really what you were talking about, self-esteem. Right. right. But also you probably will need to give them some, you know, something sort of to fight with too on how homophobia itself is wrong. That it's people's fear. I think Maybe we were talking earlier. Maybe political yeah. background, yeah. Mm -hmm. People's fear of not, not understanding uh, that we choose a different... Um, partner than they would choose, um, you know, and, and ultimately I hope that they will be able to know that that exists and that they could accept that, f you know, and choose whether how they want to associate with that person. I mean, that's what I would hope ultimately that they would see the way they discriminate against us. I wouldn't want them to discriminate against these people who, you know, think very um, rigidly about, you know, life right. and, you know, just make a decision about whether he, she would want to associate with that person or not. And do you know other lesbian couples who are parents that you either socialize with or are you in a group uh, or, you know, organization or how do you, or you just sort of find each other at work and school and... We, um, originally when we, we started wanting to have more social contacts and activities, what we did was put an ad in the lesbian uh, news uh, saying that we were a couple with kids that wanted to do social activities with other moms with kids and that started, we ran that a few months and then we got some response and we went to Santa's Village and did that sort of, you know, together uh -huh. and then we, went, we were at a cabin together and um, you know things like that but we just in our social contacts we've met a lot of women with with children too so we keep kind of recruiting other people and making uh, you know talking about it and certainly introducing the children with each other which I think is real important for Ashley and Crystal to see other children being raised by uh, gay and lesbian parents because there aren't any in their school or in their uh, daycare any other 
Now that we know, now that we know, now that we know, like I said, the school knows and the daycare knows that the, the girls are being brought up by lesbian couple. But now that we know, and it's like every day in the school, they talk about mommies and daddy, and a little bit more about le um, a divorced couple, single parents, single uh -huh. parents situation uh -huh. because it's so common. But they really don't talk about kids, and that I am very sad about that because I feel like actually the school or society is not failing us as mm -hmm. a couple because we right by now we are adults very strong they did fail us when we were little because they never introduced the idea that you were normal right that it was okay when you were little, you when you were little. in school this was such right a right so it's the same no. thing I feel it. like right. my kids are going to grow up with the same thing the the society is failing them because here they talk about all these wonderful families, about mommies and daddy being together, and they feel like their family is wonderful too. Why don't they talk about their family? Why do books never say two moms or two dads? Well, you know that book, Heather has two, two mommies, moms. or whatever, caused an enormous storm. Well, online. I was looking for it when we went to their <laughs> bookstore, to, to Ashley's um, uh, school, uh, uh -huh. like an open house, and uh -huh. they you know, had like a book fair right. that same mm -hmm. evening. We were looking around for it to see if it was there, and it wasn't there, because um, I even asked her, your Heather book, because they have it, and they like it a lot, so I thought, I asked her, have you ever seen your Heather book in here? Uh -huh. And she said no. She said so. no. And I think that's, that's very sad. That mm -hmm. is well, very sad right. because it's still left out. Well, and it's also, it's interesting that you characterize it quite correctly as society failing them. Them. Mm -hmm. And all of their children that they go to school with because mm -hmm. it's like with such a narrow focus. Right. They're then not opening their like, eyes to the you other know, kids. You can't say see all the variety There is other kids that, that do have uh, mommies, you know, two mommies or two daddies. And it's important, that's what we feel like, it's important to us to come out of the, to be out of the closet and be there and tell the kids there's nothing to hide. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll be there, both we go to the conferences, teachers and parents, and we both say we're Ashley's parents. Mm -hmm. So she'll feel strong about it and say, yes, I do have two moms. So I feel the more bonded we are and the strong we are about and, and feeling how we stand all proud, proud of with it. the way we're, we are with each other and w the way we are as a unit. You know, I think that I'm hoping that that's going to be a real, you know, unifying f force for her oh, or them to to them. be able to confront. Well, it's confront. a great example because, as mm -hmm. as you say, we're lucky. We're really lucky. Yes. We have our extended family. Mm -hmm. We have our family of origin. We have our friends. Mm -hmm. People at work are fine. People at school are fine, etc. Mm -hmm. But you know, I don't. I guess I have to say I don't think it's all luck. I think that this element of pride, mm -hmm. you know, and saying. This is who we are. We love each other. We love these girls. Mm -hmm. You know, get used to it. In right. essence, right, right. I, I wish we could talk more. We've run out of time. Of course, it always goes too fast, which is great. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you both very much for sharing your family, um, your girls, your lives with us, and thank you for sharing your time with us. And hope you'll join us every month for Get Used to It. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.